Fall is coming. Trees are changing. Hunting season is getting closer. Hey friends, welcome to another Rifle Tour episode. It's a, uh, it's a miserable day, so it's a perfect time to go shooting. Have you ever wanted to take your, uh, your M14 or your M1A or your M305 out hunting? Well that's what this episode is going to be uh, dedicated to. It's going to be dedicated to ammunition and converting military ammunition over to hunting ammunition. We'll see here what, what we've got. This here is a uh, this is your typical Norinco 143. That's it's actually a 100 143.8 grain bullet. It's a full metal jacket. So we can't take that hunting. But what we can do, let's try a round nose bullet. Same Norinco brass, or I should say steel cased ammunition, but a 3030 bullet put in there instead, 150 grain. So we're just going to be running a few tests today, uh, reloads. Remember to always back off your loads to at least 10% of the original charge and work your way up looking for signs of pressure, looking for issues. All of the reloads that we're going to be working with today are, uh, are crimped, so we should have no issues. Until then, enjoy the video. Since we're looking for bullet deformation, bullet performance, and uh, Keeping track of velocities. Think we're gonna have any feeding issues? Let's find out. We have to be shooting through a huckleberry bush in order to hit that target. Okay, let's look at that next bullet. Chamber just fine, no deformity after hitting the feed ramp. That's what I figured. The, uh, one thing I know about rifles is that round nose am ammunition actually flies pretty good. Through number four mark one Lee Enfield, we run round nose bullets uh, because it's a very very steep feeding ramp on the Lee Enfield, and when that if you're running a, a soft point Spitzer bullet, it smashes it right over, and you get a get a lot of lead pointed over to one side. So we we run round nose bullets in those rifles. Let's keep shooting. We were getting a velocity of uh, 2,435. Not bad. We can do better than that though. No deformity. This is a little bit of a stiffer primer charge, or the powder charge here. But there is an indentation right here. The 
as it hit the feed ramp. Not much though. And the uh, quite often with these uh, Chinese loads, you can see a very definite, very definite primer strike on some of these primers. After and there is a small indentation there, but it's nowhere near as bad as I've seen in the past. And one of the reasons why I'm I'm using these Chinese cases is because of that. Primers are nice and nice and hard. You can see how much room there is in the magazine with the uh, 308 running 150 grain round nose. Lots of room, but it does shift around quite a bit, which means, for example, I just bunch everything forward. As the rifle re recoils, bang, the cartridges have a tendency to inch forward in the magazine. So far, that has not caused any feeding problems. So you can see where the bullet, the uh, the cartridges are within the magazine. Okay, and you can see the uh, the feed ramp there of the chamber. We're going to take a shot, and then we're going to show you where these uh, cartridges have drifted towards in the magazine. Stand by one. Okay, here we are. We took one shot. And some of the uh, cartridges have drifted forward by about, you can see right here, they were flush with the back, back of the magazine. So they moved forward probably about an eighth of an inch. No biggie. However, you can see on this bullet here, a small deformity. And you know what? That's nothing. That's nothing. So it came from this side. Okay, it came from this side and it fed into the chamber and you can see where it hit right there. Okay, it hit right there. And I can't see the camera. It hit right there. Before entering the chamber. And it's not too bad. Oh, is the wind ever going today? I spoke to Wolf when I came in here. It's only after the first two rounds that uh, I knew he was there. That's when he ran. <laughs> the big one too. He was right there, right in the trees. Well, the, uh, so far so good folks, these aren't great groups. This here is uh, using the Chinese uh, powder, which is a shortcut extruded cylindrical powder, very similar in nature, uh, in appearance to IMR 4895. And I suspect that it's essentially a Chinese copy of that powder, but I can't say for sure. We'll have to check the tables and look at the, the bullet performance, but uh, here we're moving at a velocity of uh, 2,435 feet per second, which is pretty slow. And for some reason, my groups are over to the right. Here we're, uh, we're one grain more. We're hopefully over 2,500 feet per second. My, uh, the chronograph died on me, so I don't know for sure. Then over here, as the velocity seems to pick up, the group is slowly moving to the left. This is uh, quite a bit jumping uh, in, uh, in powder charge, and it's from uh, 
35.5 to 38.5 but the groups are starting to pull together just a little bit and here's our last charge at 39.5 two bolts are touching and these targets are wet But essentially, testing is now over. One, two, three, four. So, there, and here's the max load. One, two, three, four. It's a two inch group. It's not bad. So, yes, you can salvage your Chinese Norinco military ammunition and turn it into hunting ammunition with without too much difficulty. The round nose ammunition that I was using for this test uh, was crimped on the cannular. Cannular, okay, there was lots of room forward to seat the bullet, but I wanted to crimp it on the cannular to make sure that the bullet stayed in place from bouncing around inside the magazine. Um, you don't want that bullet to move deeper into the case because you get extremely high pressure when you do that. Um, using the Chinese uh, cases and reusing all that stuff is a great idea. A, because they're great primers. They always go bang when you pull the trigger. They're nice and hard, perfect for these rifles. And it just makes a lot of sense if you actually think about it. What a great hunting platform. And a great rifle to use it. Great ammunition for the purpose of hunting. Uh, Liberal Senator Céline Herview Payette, you're wrong. Hunting rifles are perfectly suitable for the purpose of hunting. If they're semi-automatics, they're actually great rifles for hunting. Proof is right here. So you see, performance-wise, there's no reason why you would not consider a semi-automatic rifle as one of your primary hunting hunting guns. Additionally, if you if you shoot the animal and it doesn't fall immediately. People are humans, right? We make mistakes. Not every shot is perfect. With a semi-automatic, you can get a follow-up shot to finish that animal off and harvest it. Rather than struggle with your rifle, with its pump action, lever action, or bolt action rifle, or a hinge action, single shot, rather than trying to reload, taking more time, and by that time, the animal has disappeared into the woods. Now you've got to track it down. It's in pain. You feel bad about the situation, and conceivably it could be a dangerous situation. Wounded animals can, um, they can respond in unpredictable ways. Cool. Bang! Bang! Rather than potentially losing an animal and having it needlessly suffer. Semi-automatic rifles are perfectly suitable for the purpose of hunting. And in many ways, and I think most of you will agree, a preferred option. For, you, for today's modern hunter. Something for consideration, folks. It's Rifle Chair signing off. And as always, Maple Leaf up.